morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. I am Pastor Daniel, pastor here at the McCordsville United Methodist Church. I want to welcome all those gathering online and those that have gathered in person for worship here today. Our hope, our prayer is that during this time of fellowship, during this time of worship, during our time of prayer together, of hearing the word, that we would all be embraced by God and in that embrace be filled with his presence beyond the point of overflowing. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that we could gather here in your house. We thank you that this day is your day and that, God, that we are here and it is all about you. Father, we pray that during this time of worship, as we're praying, as we're hearing your word, as we're singing praises unto your name, we just pray that you would fill our hearts, fill our minds, fill our lives with your Holy Spirit, with your presence. We pray, God, that you would fill us as a cup to the point of overflowing. And we pray this all in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Daniel. Will you stand as you're able and join us in worship this morning? I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my tomb Till I met you you called my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day you called my name into your glorious day now your mercy is saved my soul and your freedom is all that I know Sweet I met you You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name I needed rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, now you call me a citizen of heaven. to your glorious day amen let's continue the time of worship by declaring our faith together please join me in the apostles creed i believe in god the father almighty 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Take a moment, say hello to one another, greet one another, share the Lord's peace with one another. Greetings. Hello, greetings, greetings, hello. May be seated, may have a seat, may have a seat, may have a seat. Man, I tell you what, that first uh, song you guys did, I was just, it just made me so happy. It's like, you know, the different worship songs have kind of like different feels, different flows to them. They kind of have a different impact on, on us as individuals as we're singing them, as we're worshiping. And that's just such a happy song. And like, you know, the keys in there, I was just like, this is so happy. It just makes me happy. So thank you for everything you guys do, really. You guys are a blessing to us. And, and uh, I just love, love this time uh, together that we have each week. But this morning, we do have some important tidbits and quite a few of those to share with you. The poinsettia forms have been sent in. If you did not get a chance to uh, uh, purchase a poinsettia in uh, memory or in honor of someone, there are three left. I can't promise there's still three, but there was when I made that announcement earlier today. So if you would still like uh, to have a loved one remembered and, and honored through a poinsettia, uh, we are encouraging folks uh, to pick one of those up at one of the, the local nurseries. And then by the 10th of December to have it here so it would be ready uh, to be a part of this worship scene that we would have together uh, during Advent. Yes, indeed. All right. Also, the Ad Council is at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. That is Monday, tomorrow, 7 o'clock. Blood Drive will be this Thursday, the 18th, from 3 o'clock to 7 o'clock. You can find sign up, uh, the sign-up sheets or sign-up uh, link on the weekly email. And then also you can find uh, the links on our Facebook pages. We are also going and ready to embark upon this year's Thanksgiving dinner. We have limited seating. We've kind of pulled back on the number of guests that we'll be able to have within the fellowship hall. We know this will change things up a little bit. And so we added an extra hour, half hour um, hour and a half, really, uh, to the time of serving. It'll be from 3.30 to 7.30 instead of our normal 4.30 to 7. So we've added some time to try to accommodate uh, more guests to come through and uh, to kind of spread out the crowd. Um, there's also been some changes in the way that the actual uh, the Thanksgiving line will be um, with people's uh, uh, safety in mind. So uh, know that we are taking precautions. We're also asking people that are volunteering to mask up uh, during the Thanksgiving dinner. Um, so uh, so we look forward to it. Also, Friday, if you can help, start at 9 o'clock. There'll be a group of people here at the church moving tables, getting stuff ready, getting stuff set up for Thanksgiving dinner. And then uh, there's also some need for things with the kitchen and the food that day as well. A lot going on there. Good stuff, though. Weekly email. This is the best way to stay in touch with all the in and outs that are going on with the church. If you want to be included in that, we're asking that you email that request to communications at mccordsvilleumc.org. Then you will be on a weekly email that comes out of a Friday. And in that email, you'll find prayer concerns. You'll find the joys that we shared with one another. Some updates that have happened throughout the week and upcoming events and missions and ministries in and through the church. So that's the best way to find out what's happening and what you can get involved with. Also, Thursday at 7 o'clock, the Circle of Caring, the grief, uh, grief Support Group, will continue. This is an opportunity for folks to come and to, to be with one another and uh, to experience life together in the midst of the journey of grief that you're on. Um, if that's something you're interested in, it is every other Thursday, and it will be again this Thursday at 7. Last but not least... Darkness to Dawning Sunday School class is going to be running throughout this uh, next uh, uh, Advent season. It will actually be running through this time of worship here. But it is something that we're going to be expounding upon and kind of growing upon to offer more and more Sunday School opportunities. 
Um, and, and also, uh, the, the lady that is, the lady and husband that are running is Emma Sue and Dennis Gavinport, or Davenport. Um, she is going to be having uh, Advent devotionals um, ready for each of the families to have at no cost to you. Um, it's something that she has just been passionate about and been in ministry uh, 40 something years and, and is just very passionate about God's word and very passionate about Sunday school, very passionate about getting people just uh, engaging in, in their uh, daily lives with Christ. And so we will have those Advent calendars or Advent devotionals on the 28th of November and look for some more opportunities for Sunday school class in small groups going into 2021, 2022, I mean. That was a lot. All right, Corey. <laughs> that was just a, a real funny introduction there. Will you stand with us once again as we continue to enter into God's presence? All my obsessions, I want to lay them all down in your hands. Only your love is vital, though I'm not entitled, still you call me your child. Oh God, you don't need me, but somehow you want me. Oh, how you love me. Somehow that frees me to take my hands off of my life and the way it should go. Oh, God, you don't need me, but somehow you want me. Oh, how you love me. Somehow that frees me to open my hands up and give you control. I give you control. I've had plans shattered and broken Things I've had hoped in fall through my hands You have plans to redeem and restore me You're behind and before me Oh, help me believe God, you don't need me, but somehow you want me. Oh, how that frees oh, how that frees me to take my hands off of my life the way it should go. Oh, God, you don't need me, but somehow you want me. Oh, how you love me. Somehow that frees me to open my hands up and give you control. Somehow you want me, King of Heaven wants me. So this world has lost its grip on me. You want me. Somehow you want me, King of Heaven wants me. So this world has lost its grip on me. God, you don't need me, but somehow you want me. Oh, how you love me Somehow that frees me to take my hands off of my life And the way it should go Oh, God, you don't need me But somehow you want me Oh, how you love me Somehow that frees me to open my hands up And give you control I give you control Oh, give you control I give you control You want me Somehow you want me The King of Heaven wants me So 
for this world has lost its grip on me. a place where mercy reigns and never dies there's a place where streams of grace go deep and wide thank you Jesus where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood, comes flowing down. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in
Oh, again, thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, this morning, do we have any joys? Some good news that we'd like to share with one another? Some joys. Anyone at all? Yeah, Saran. Oh, yeah. Yes. Saran just shared that it was so good to see Bob, and Bob echoed the same. Yes, indeed. Bob and Marilyn, yes. It's good to see you both. Baron the snow. You know, I blame Danny Vale for this one, but first service last week, he said, forecast or farmer's almanac or something's telling us a lot of snow's coming. Lo and behold, a week later, there's snow on the ground. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes. Yes, I love snow, and I know I can get in trouble for saying that out loud, but uh, yes, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And honestly, it makes me think of scripture, too. Uh, where it, your, your sins as they were crimson will be made white as snow. And it's a, it's a powerful concept, that crisp, clean. Yes, yes, indeed. Any other joys? Any other joys? Yes. It is. It is good to have you, Helen. It's good to have you, Jenny, today. Yes. A couple of our online folks are here with us. Yes, indeed. This is great. And what a day to pick, right? What a day to pick. <laughs> Indeed. Yes, Rox? Yes. I don't know if I can effectively recap all of that, but what I heard was, you guys are awesome. Thank you for being so faithful and continuing to practice. But again, like Corey, like you shared, it's not just a performance. It's not a performance. It's leading into worship, and that's what makes it so special. It's, it's this, this, this beautiful thing, and uh, you guys are wonderful. I keep saying it's like McCordsville's best-kept secret, you know? It's like... These guys, it's amazing um, what you all, how you all have gelled together, and it's wonderful. Anything else? Any other joys? I knew no, Thursday happened to be a special day in our country, and that was uh, Veterans Day. And uh, one thing that we as a church um, like to do is to, to honor, to, to celebrate veterans. And I believe we do have a veteran here, at least uh, a couple veterans maybe uh, with us. Uh, but if you are a veteran, uh, you know, raise of a hand, uh, standing where you are, we would like to honor you and to celebrate you for your service. Bob? <laughs> Alan? Thank you guys so much. You know, I, I, every time when we celebrate the celebrate veterans, I, I, I go back to Jesus and I go back to his sacrifice upon the cross and how at the heart of Christianity is sacrifice. And serving your country is definitely an act of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, I, I, I always kind of bounce those ideas, you know, off of each other. And uh, and it causes my heart to swell in thanks for, for veterans because you guys are what allow us to gather here freely and to speak Jesus' name boldly. And uh, I think it's, it's a wonderful thing. Um, Whereas we would still speak Jesus' name, even if it were illegal, but here in America, we can gather and do so freely. And that's a blessing. It is a blessing. Yes, indeed. Anything else we'd like to share with one another? Yeah. No, you're good, Rox. Okay. Very cool.
Very cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, two things there. Rox shared uh, Miss O'Brien, Mrs. O'Brien is going to have back surgery tomorrow, so definitely prayers for her and also prayers for a as fast as possible recovery. I know the back surgeries can be quite the recovery, so just pray for a smooth and full recovery for her. Uh, but then also prayers for your Veterans Day program, Rox, that you and your class are leading this Wednesday at school. And, uh, and again, I think it's always a good thing to remember and to celebrate uh, veterans for what they've done on our behalf. Absolutely. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we come before you here today and again, thinking and reflecting upon your sacrifice upon the cross. Lord, we're just so thankful that you thought of us. So thankful that you put us first and climbed upon that cross on our behalf. What an act of love. What an act of love. As the scripture says, while we're still in our sins, you died for us. While we're still living in disobedience to you, God, you died for us. And we pray that that act of sacrifice and that act of love would just impact our lives every single moment of every single day. We pray that we would not allow our hearts to grow cold or to become ungrateful for what you've done, Jesus. And we pray that by your Holy Spirit, you would keep those embers of gratitude continually burning in our hearts for what you have done for us, Jesus. But Lord, for the veterans, we also pray that we as a nation would not be ungrateful for what they have done, but we as a nation would be grateful for their sacrifice as well on our behalf. Father, we pray for this nation. We pray for healing. We pray for mending. We pray for faith to come alive. We pray that your narrative, God, that we find within the word would begin to just be ringing true within the lives and hearts of people. Father, we pray again for revival, and we pray that you would begin this reviving within our hearts, within our minds, within our lives. We pray that we would be a catalyst for more and more people to come to know you, Jesus. That we would be a people that are a bridge that help others come to believe in you, to trust in you, to have faith themselves. Father, we pray that we would be like that that woman at the well that after our encount- her encounter with you went into her town and spoke your name boldly. We pray we would do so within the lives, the context of our lives and that more and more people would come to know you, Jesus, through us. Lord, help us to not overly complicate it. Help us to not bog it down with all kinds of other ideas and whatever, but just a simple announcing, a sharing of you, Jesus. Now, Lord, we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, today we are going to be continuing our adventure, kind of alongside Craig Rochelle and his book, Winning the Warrior Mind. Um, and, uh, and if you have been following along, you would know that it's sometimes very loosely connected in these messages, but at the same time connected with some of the illustrations and ideas that he shares. Uh, But today's message is uh, really entitled, Lenses and Filters, Lenses and Filters. And the main scripture that we'll be looking at is going to be coming from Philippians chapter 1. But to get us started, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Every single day we look at our lives, the happenings, the going-ons through filters and through lenses. The filters we use, the lenses we use, determines the how that we interpret the happenings of our lives. It's why two people can go through the exact same experience and have completely, totally different takes on what that journey, on what that chapter of life was like. 
take this glass of water. The glass of water is clearly half full. You can tell that it is half full by where the water line is within the cup, the halfway point, and it is obviously half full. How many people here would agree with my assessment of this cup of water? Passionately, people are like, yes, it's half full. How many people would say that cup is clearly, sir, half empty? Anyone amongst us? Yes, there are some amongst us. There are. It depends on how thirsty you are. <laughs> Lenses and filters are a thing of life. The way they are created, the way that they're constructed, is through the going ons and the happenings and the living out of the roller coaster that life blessedly is. Each experience, each chapter lived, adds another layer to the filter or causes the lens to become that much clearer or that much foggier. In life, we must ensure that we, through God's grace, are using, utilizing the correct lenses or using the right filters that our God so desires us to have. Lenses and filters that allow us to see God's goodness, to see and experience his love, to see his life, to see his beauty, to see his plan throughout the in and out of our days, even during those not so wanted days. How many people here are familiar with the tell, the fable, the three little pigs. Now we should get a hand from everyone, right? The first written edition, a little fun fact, stretches all the way back to 1840, but it is believed to be a much older tale than that. But what if the story that we all think we know is actually, actually wrong? I give you the true story of the three little pigs. The true story of the three little pigs. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of her diet. It's not my fault that wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheeps and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were big and bad too. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Way back in once upon a time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. And I had a terrible sneezing cold. I ran out of sugar. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now this neighbor was a pig, and he wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house of straw? So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into someone else's house, so I called. Little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was about to go home with a cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake, and that's when my nose started to itch and I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed a horribly great sneeze. <laughs> and you know what? The whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw, so I ate it up. Think of it as a cheeseburger just lying there. Now to find out what happens to the other two pigs, you'll have to either borrow my book or go get your own. <laughs> but at the end of the tale, the wolf, he argues that he, that he was framed. If you change the way you look at things... 
even though those things may not change. The things you look at, well, they change. Throughout our lives, we all looked at the story of the three little pigs who the lens of the pigs' take and not the filter of the wolf's. Being so, the pigs are clearly the victims and the wolf the antagonist. But according to the wolf, it was all just a big misunderstanding. Change out the filter, change out the lens, and the exact same story, the exact same happenings, the exact same circumstances, and we have ourselves a completely different tale. The same can be true in your life. If the lenses and filters you've been using have been causing you to negatively, pessimistically, despairingly interpret the going-ons, the in-and-outs of your days, well, you need to change your filter. If in looking over the course of your previous weeks or months, you see that the trajectory of your life is not heading in a meaning-prone, hope-filled, God-has-a-plan-for-your-life sort of way, then by God's grace, you need to swap out the lenses you've been using for a pair of spectacles that God would so desire you to look at your life through. Lenses and filters that are based and aspired upon his word. So let us turn to such a filter. Let us turn to such a lens. This is Philippians chapter 1 and it's verses 12 through 14. I invite you, if able, to stand with me for just this portion of the reading of God's word. Paul writing, again, he says, I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has happened to spread, has helped to spread the good news. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I am in chains because of Jesus. And because of my imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message to one another, to others, without fear. Hmm. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we ask in this continued time of preaching and teaching that you would open our hearts and our minds to your word. We pray that during this time you would continue to have us upon your potter's wheel and that we would be molded and shaped a little more into the people that, God, you know that by your grace we could be. And all God's people said, amen. May we seated. it. The filter, the lenses that Paul was using in his interpretation of this little stint in that rat-infested, unsanitary, very much not like a Holiday Inn Express sort of way, was what made his stay in that jail not just bearable, not just able to just squeak on by that experience and come out slightly scathed, but for his experience in that jail to actually be meaningful. Paul very much could have sunk into the depths of despair in what he was going through. His situation was grim. His circumstances dire. He very well could have just focused upon those kinds of things or even focused upon what he wanted to be doing instead of what he was actually doing. He had his heart set at this point in his life of heading to Rome to share the gospel of Christ in the city of cities. If the gospel could take hold in a place like Rome, then the entire world could be transformed for Jesus. Yet what he was doing in that moment wasn't packing for a trip wasn't laying plans for his day and where in Rome he could share the gospel in the most effective of ways and the most effective of places. No, he was sitting there in a stinking jail cell shackled to a Roman guard. If he had not used a proper lens and filter to look at his situation, to interpret what was happening in his life, that proper lens and filter of God has a plan, God is with me, and these people need Jesus. Well, he could have come up with some seriously negative, life-sapping conclusions. But he didn't. Now, the lens he used, the filter he used, were of the God kind. And he was able to interpret the most despairing of situations, the most difficult of circumstances, through how God would have them to see them. And his ultimate conclusion was simply this. Everything. 
That's happened to me. Here, he says, has actually helped to spread the good news. I mean, think of it. He saw being chained to a Roman guard as an opportunity for him to share with that guard the gospel. Instead of, woe is me, woe is me, I'm locked in this cell, life has been unfair to me. He thought, here's one more person that I'm going to get to share Jesus with. And well, he is a captive audience. Lenses and filters. They determine whether we see the happenings and going on in our lives in a way that God so desires or in a way that our enemy so desires. With God, when we see our lives and the unfoldings therein as part of his divine plan and purpose, then we can find the inspiration needed to not just keep on keeping on, but to soar with purpose and live out in strides the plan and the purpose that God has for our lives. I love the passage in Jeremiah that says, Before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. I set you apart, called you, and have a purpose for your life. That word was true for him, and it is true for us. The enemy would have us use his negative, pessimistic lens and filter of, God is done with you. God doesn't have a plan for you. God isn't interested in using someone like you. And then therefore interpret the going-ons and the happenings in our life in such a deep, dark way that we live out our days not soaring with inspiration and experiencing the joy and the love of God, but living out our days deflated, dejected, and demoralized. Maybe an example is needed. Craig Rochelle in his book of mention, he shares the following blurb of a story. He says, there's a story about a young man who was at a crisis point about his future, and he didn't know what direction to turn. Hmm. Anyone ever been there? His mom told him he should go visit a retired pastor who for many years had lived just a few houses down. Barely knowing the man, but desperate for help, he agreed. And as the discussion finally turned toward faith, the young man said, The problem I have, sirs, is I just can't seem to see God in this world. The elder pastor responded quietly yet confidently, Well, son, I have a very different problem. When I look at the same world, I cannot not see him. In your life, the how that you see life determines whether you see God on the move, God at work in and around your life, or not. Two people living in the same world. One saw no evidence of God whatsoever, while the other saw his fingerprints upon it all. The lenses we use, the filters we use to interpret the ins and outs and happenings of our life, it matters a great deal. It means whether we get to see the living God at move, working within this world and when you see the living God on the move at work it has a way of causing a surge of inspiration a surge of hope a surge of of just life and happiness because when we see him on the move we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there's hope that he's not done that he still has a plan that's unfolding but when we look at life completely devoid of him at work, life can become a very heavy thing indeed. Another spin. So growing up in the Peyton household, we had amongst us morning people and night owls. Anyone here a morning person? Morning people? Lord bless you. Yep. Mm -hmm. My uh, aunt, she loves taking pictures of sunrises and I tell her that sunsets are beautiful as well mm -hmm. that is I am a night owl is anyone else with me anyone else a night owl love the peace of the night 
That's only when you can see Christmas lights, right? I mean, come on. Well, as many of you know, again, I am a night owl. And, and I love, I love staying up into the wee hours of the morning. I, like my grandpa, pops when the sun goes down. I just perk right on up. I'm like, woo, yeah, yeah, let's do something. And everybody else is in bed. And I'm like, well, okay. Hmm. Well, growing up in Ligoti, I had a little problem. And that problem was one Dennis Payton, my dad. He is where I inherited the lungs that I have and can be rather loud, as well as Luke. But in my household, growing up, my dad would walk through the house and declare at the top of his lungs. I mean, the top of his lungs. Whether the skies be cloudy or gray, I will be happy today. And he wouldn't just bell this from like downstairs, you know, to cause it to echo through the house. Oh, no. He'd walk up to the foot of my bed and he would declare as loud as he could, if the skies be cloudy or gray, I will be happy today. I will admit, I tried this on Sarah one time in our marriage and it was only during a nap. I have never done that again. But the lens, the filter I was using at that point in my day was not a happy, hopeful, bright sort of lens, sort of filter, oh no. I was looking at my day like Alexander in the no good, rotten, very bad day. Instead of me waking up with gum in my hair, I woke up to my dad bellowing in my ears. My filter, my lens caused me to not see the upcoming day as a happy sort of day in any sort of way. Dad's filter, dad's lens, on a Peyton-like, instigating-like way, did. And I even think my misery enhanced his happiness. He knew it would drive me bonkers, and he loved it. (sighs) Do we see our days when they start, as they unfold as days, even though the skies may be cloudy and gray or snow on the ground, as potentially happy, meaningful days? How do we see through the lenses and filters we presently have in our minds? See, each day is just another day waiting for that other shoe to drop. Again, the exact same circumstances, mourning. My dad and I, different lenses, different filters, and completely different experiences and outcomes. Let's bring Jesus into this. In Matthew 7, we find these following words. He says, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. He says, for everyone who asks, receives, and the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be open." In reading this book I've been mentioning by Craig Groeschel, I've never considered these words of Jesus in the following way. We in life, we find, we see what we are looking, what we are seeking Four, follow me. If what we want to find in this life is more negative fodder, is more bad news, to cause our outlook upon our days or our life to become bleaker, we absolutely will and can find just that. But if we want to find God at work, we want to see, as that retired pastor did, see his fingerprints upon his artwork, his creation, us included, well, then we will. As to say, we in life, we by the lenses and filters engaged. We can be, as Craig O'Shell puts, we can all be vultures or hummingbirds. Follow me. It says vultures and soar high in the sky, searching. What does a vulture find? Dead things. The ugly, oversized bird doesn't stop until he finds lifeless roadkill. Vultures can sniff out a dead critter for more than a mile and have been known to cruise 30 to 50 miles in search of rotting food. Makes me think of some people I know. Moving on. (laughs) Should have said that. Going on, he says, Now contrast the vulture to the tiny hummingbird with wings flapping 20 beats a second. This small bird finds what? Not dead, disgusting, rotting, rancid meat, but sweet, life-giving nectar. 
daily, each bird finds what it is looking for. Are you spending your days waiting for the shoe to drop? Spending your days like a vulture, hunting for rancid meat, hunting for something else negative, something else that feeds your already bleak outlook upon your day or upon your life? Or are you being a hummingbird, looking for God, looking for that sweet nectar of evidence of his presence in your life? What you look for, what you seek in this life, you will find. If the filter you have only allows you to interpret the happenings of your life in the worst Alexander Peyton household of the morning, like possible, then that filter is busted. But if the lens you have is of the God kind, if the lens you have is based upon his word, then you'll be able to see clearly where he's on the move where he's at work, that he has not given up on you and your life. But if that lens is broken and all you can see is injustice reigning, injustice winning, well, then that lens too is broken. But there's good news. There's always good news for you can change the way you look at things. And when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Even if the circumstance doesn't change, you can read it different. You can look at it different. You can frame it up and shape it up in your mind different. But what it takes is a switching out of those lenses, of those filters. See, again, we throughout our lives and the happenings therein daily are building and creating the how that we look at life and interpret life. If you don't like what you're seeing, God can help, can by his grace help you change the lens, change the filter so you can see him and life clearly again. A life where there is hope a life where there is love, a life where there is purpose, a life where there is a plan, a life where there isn't only rancid meat, but a life where God is on the move again. How? By swapping out the lens of the world and the lenses of the past pains and hurts for the lens of his word. Spun one last way. So I've been chewing on this message and usually do so beginning on Monday, right? Leading up to Sunday every week. It's kind of this cycle I go through. And as I was chewing on this message, I had to eat a little bit of humble pie. Thursday, as you may know, it rained. Tuesday, it was not raining. And so Tuesday, I decided to fire up my pellet grill and put some burgers on. They were delicious. Had a great time. Tuesday night, guess what I did not do? I did not cover my grill. And then Wednesday came, and Wednesday was a beautiful day. Beautiful day. About Wednesday evening at about 8.30 at night, I looked at Sarah, and I said, you know, I really need to cover my grill. I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow. And that thought just went poof. Thursday, I wake up, and guess what? It was doing outside. It wasn't snowing. It was, in fact, raining. And when I came downstairs and I looked outside, all I saw was my rain-soaked pellet grill. And when I saw my grill in such a condition, it sent me into orbit. You see, pellet grills, smoker grills, they don't do so well in the rain. They have lots of electronical things inside, and the pellets can turn to mush, and rain can do a number to them. So there I stood looking at my broken, ruined, rain-soaked grill. I knew the grill was toast. I knew that the grill was done. I knew, just knew that my smoking of delicious meats run was over. That the ribs were over. And then it hit me. I'm looking at this all wrong. 
all wrong. That grill can handle a little rain. That grill probably has some weather resistance built within. Because it's a grill. It's meant to be outside. And then by golly, guess what happened? I got some towels and I dried off the grill and I covered it from and protected it from further rain. My lens, my filter, there temporarily had me stuck in an indefinite implosion. Sarah can attest for this for the two phone calls that I made in that time. <sighs> and me, when I was stuck in that indefinite implosion, it just caused the grill to get wetter and wetter. But then when I changed the filter and swapped the lens, I got the, drill, the grill dry and covered it. We and the filters and lenses we use in life are causing us to, in our own ways, to indefinitely implode, only seeing negative outcomes and bad things come in our way. But when we trade out those clogged filters, those broken lenses, for what God would have us use from his word, then we get back to living. Then we get back to seeing him on the move in and through our lives. Even though the circumstances, the happenings, and the situations, even though they may not have changed. So in closing, and there is no communion, you don't like what you're seeing unfold in your life? You don't like feeling so dreary, feeling as if life is just Many shades of bleak. And do as I had to do Thursday. Swap out that old clog with the world, clogged with the pain of your past filter. Swap out those broken, shattered by wounds of the past lenses. And take up God's desired, healing, enabling, mending, inducing, grace made possible filter and lenses. And in so doing, get a new perspective on the life that you're presently living. Because if you change the way you look at things, even if they never change, the things you look at, they do change. So, so yeah, Daniel, I've got, I've got two things to, to say about your sermon here. Not that my opinion matters in any way whatsoever. <laughs> but yeah, that, that glass half full thing. If that were a glass of milk, everybody knows I do not like milk. That would be a glass half full because I have to drink an, a whole half of the glass still. But if it were like a nice, cold, like fresh out the tap, you know, soda, then it's a glass half empty because I only have a, a you know, halfway, halfway left. Like, there's only half a glass left. I want more of it, right? So I think it all depends on, you know, how thirsty you are. I, I guess I'm a, a realist more than an optimist or a, or a pessimist here. <laughs> I don't think that's true. <laughs> But then again, going off of your, your vulture thing, I, I think when you said it reminds you of people, you might have been thinking of me. <laughs> because there was a time that I was a bit of a vulture. <laughs> but that's a whole different story. So, <laughs> that's very true. I guess there's that too. <laughs> All right. Will you stand with us as we uh, worship, uh, sing our last song today? Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You 
lead us by still waters into mercy and nothing can keep us apart so remember your people remember your children remember your promise oh god your grace is enough Great is your love and justice, God of Jacob. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along. So Father, we just pray that you continue to do this work of grace within our hearts, within our lives as we go from this place. Help us, Father, to look at life through the lenses, interpret life through the filters. Let God, you would will us to have filters and lenses based upon your word. And we pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. See you all next time. Look out for each other. Take care and don't slip. <laughs>